Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today's episode is about whether women actually just want a servant and which kind of men think this and why and whether it's accurate or inaccurate. Um, So before that, please do subscribe. My most recent subscriber episode is when your rigidity is harming your relationship with your husband and kids. Rigidity is often synonymous with anxiety, but people who are anxious don't necessarily like to think of themselves as rigid, but yet that is really definitionally accurate. Um, Okay, so let's move to this week's, or not this week, I do multiple per week, this day's episode. Um, Some men who are partnered with women who really uh, are not very loving toward them, um, the women are not villains, of course, you know, I don't think like that, everything's a dynamic, but well, I'll, I'll just describe the situation. They don't have sex or they have very limited sex. They have very limited affection. And also the woman wants the man to do a lot of extra stuff around the house, extra by his perspective, because he would usually not do much around the house. Or, well, let, let's just be um, overly uh, optimistic. Maybe he just does a lot around the house, but she wants him to do even more. So men in this situation can become very cynical and negative and say, women just want servants. And when I write posts like just do the stuff your wife wants, they, you know, neglect to remember that I also uh, write posts like just have sex with your husband. (laughs) Um, And especially podcasts like that. But um, instead, they say, well, shit, you know, uh, women just want a servant or a butler. And that's all that they want. So basically, male female relationships suck. Well, when do men really think like this? Usually, and I've written a post about this uh, recently, it's it's obviously, as is everything, tied to your family of origin. So men that grew up seeing a marriage that was pretty cold and the woman was in charge and she just ordered the man around, I mean, this is what they think of marriage as. So then in later life, they are drawn to this familiar dynamic, even though they want something different, they don't really know how to be in something different. So they, like everybody are subconsciously drawn to what they grew up seeing, particularly in a first marriage and or before you've gone into therapy. And so then you're really just operating on automatic pilot however you were trained. So a lot of these men have seen mothers who wore the pants in the family and did not give the man, the husband, the boy's father, much in terms of affection or love, certainly not sexually or romantically. Of course, yet again, I always have to... um, put the uh, qualifier that of course you're not supposed to see your parents have sex but you are hopefully in a, a happy family seeing that the man and woman are like kissing or cuddling your mother and father and uh, engaging in some sort of affection that you later in life can um, take as an indicator that they did in fact have a sexual and romantic relationship. So boys who are raised in this sort of household grow up with the implicit idea that men's job is to be a servant because that's what they saw with their dad. So they can go one of two ways. They can either become the mom, basically, and be the asshole, the one who just is cold and wants everything their way. And because they're a man and they have a higher libido, these frequently turn into the men who don't want cuddling, don't want romance, but only want to fuck, as the woman thinks, you know. There are those men, just because I try to write on behalf of all the men whose, um, you know, initiatives for romance are squelched by their partners, doesn't mean that there aren't many, and I discuss this also, avoidant men who don't want to cuddle, don't want romantic intimacy, but just really do want sex, and those give the rest of the men a bad name, you know. So, uh, so they either take on their mother's persona and they and they become the man who wears the pants and they have like a, a kind of um, deferential, obsequious wife who runs around like a little mouse trying to please them. And, you know, herself was, um, well, I'll, I'll get to what the women were raised as soon, but you can imagine not wonderfully if she is engaged with a man like that. Or they just take a more direct path and emulate their father subconsciously and marry a woman like their mother. A cold, what I call ice queens, you can refer back to my ice queen podcast or post, that, um, you know, is in charge and that the martyred man is always putting on a pedestal and looking up to um, and trying to please so more of the preoccupied husband and the avoidant wife and more of the acts of service woman. But acts of service, although it 
it, it gets a bad name. And I, I wrote a post on how acts of service and physical affection or a podcast are different. Um, love language is completely on different ends of the spectrum. But that isn't always the case. So this can't acts of service like there ain't nothing wrong with acts of service like most women want acts of service particularly when they have small kids and I talk in one of my posts about how acts of service can change over not acts of service love languages can change based on your stage of life only sometimes and the ones that I most often see are acts of service is super important when the woman has young kids around so acts of service is um it just means like if you tell your husband, like, the door just fell off the hinges, how long does it take before he fixes that, assuming that he can fix it, right? And Or how long before he deals with it if you can't deal with it? Like, I mean, I'm, and I'm not talking about, like, a crazy situation. So there are normal situations where both people are trying hard to keep the home going and the woman feels maxed out for whatever reason and not because she's sitting around eating bonbons or anything r- ridiculous because, like, let's say a common situation, she's, like, literally nursing a baby and she says, can you uh, clean up the counter? So there's two ways that a man can deal with this situation. The functional way, a man who was raised in a happy home says, okay, hon, sure, cleans up the counter. That's it, because she's nursing the baby. That's it, he just cleans up the fucking counter. That's all. It's not like a big fucking to-do and a big ticker tape parade about him doing it. He just cleans it up. You know what? In some households, she doesn't even have to ask. I hope you were sitting down so you didn't fall down. In many households, she doesn't even have to ask. And as I discussed frequently, there are many households where the man is cleaner than the woman. And he's the one who's who's exhorting her to clean the counter sometimes because he does it 90% of the time. Yes, that is real. My husband is that person. <laughs> if you are <laughs> if you are a man that is very organized, like honestly a lot of like military guys are that person. Military guys are like so organized a lot of the time because they were trained that way. So they will never leave a mess at night. They couldn't. So anyway, the the point is there's a normal way for acts of service to be taken. What is dysfunctional is when acts of service is the only love language. When the woman looks at the love language questionnaire and she's like, holy shit, none of this shit applies. I mean, I guess I want him to do shit, so I'll pick that one. But acts of service in and of itself, I mean, I frequently talk about myself as a physical touch love language person, but I need to qualify, apparently, for people who think differently that... um. Acts of service is is a prerequisite for the physical touch language to come out even. You know, so even for a high libido person or high physical touch love language person, if you say, can you clean up the counter and he says no, there ain't no physical touch happening, not in the next millennium, you know, because you're like, why are you being an asshole for then? Fuck you. And your, your, um, your, your drive just like dries up. It's like, you know, like a, there's a, there's a freshwater spring and oasis in the desert. And when he says, no, I'm not cleaning the counter, it just goes away. It just, uh, there's no more, it evaporates. So, you know, in, in a healthy relationship, acts of service is considered something that both people do for one another, and the man's may be in the realm of physical touch or sex. And I've talked about, you know, sex as act of service and how that's actually good. If the woman thinks about it as something she's doing for him, then she can get herself into the mood for responsive desire, where then she's doing it for herself as well, uh, you know, a few minutes into it. But she can have the frame of that this is something that I do for him when I'm not in the mood and then I get in the mood and that's not bad. In fact, that's good and many, many women used to think like that as a matter of course. So who gets into, so reverting to the situation of the loveless marriage where the man feels like a servant, which women get into these marriages? Well, they saw very, very similar upbringings. There was one parent who was in charge and one parent who wasn't. And so they just picked the other one. They picked the other side. They're going to be the one in charge because they don't want to be the weak one. This isn't like they flip a switch or uh, flip a coin rather, or they decide consciously. Sometimes it is conscious. Sometimes women will be like, my mother got treated like so much shit that that I resolve that I will never get treated like shit by a man, but then they got a blind spot that they may be the ones treating like shit. May not be like their father who was drunk and cursing, but they may be cold and inaccessible and dismissive. But either way, they did actually make a conscious choice. I will never marry some piece of shit asshole like my father. I hear this a lot, you know, but unfortunately they become more of that person. 
in a in a quieter kind of more feminine asshole. <laughs> but you know, so neither one of these people were raised in a functional household, and the man only thinks of acts of service as so bad because of the house he was drawn he was raised in, and then the women that he's drawn to, which is based from the house that he was raised in. In a more functional, healthy relationship, acts of service is just thought of as like something that we do. Oh, my wife wants me to do this chore. I'm just going to do it. You should have heard the variation, and you can. You still have the opportunity to go back to join my Facebook group, uh, my secret Facebook group, and, and search through the conversations for the one about chores and acts of service. And there were so many men that were like, oh, yeah, when your wife tells you to do something, you just do it. You know, you got a list. And so you put it on the list and you do it either that day or the next day. And so many women were like, what? My husband doesn't have a list. Were you crazy? You know, and so when when there are people that have very different dynamics from yourselves, you really don't realize it, that, that there are so many men because a, a lot of the main reason that the main thing people say about getting that they're getting from my Facebook group is that they see the other perspective because there's so many, it's really 50, 50 men, women. And so, you know, they'll say something they think is obvious. Like, uh, what do you do when your husband doesn't, you know, the door falls off the hinges. I made that one up the hypothetical, and your husband doesn't fix it for three years. And then like all these guys will be like, the fuck are you talking about? You know what? I would have it fixed that day. It's a door. You know what? 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 You know? And so and so many women then will be like, wait, yeah, sure. Yeah, he doesn't fix it for three years. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And of course, uh, the the, uh, confound is that people who are going to literally pay $5 a month to join a Facebook group are people who are fairly committed to themselves being the change they want to see in their marriage. So I'm getting, you know, the people who are the the more focused on the relationship in their relationship partner, right? But but still, it it, it is a very big wake-up call for a lot of women that they could, in fact, find a man who would get the door back on the hinges. Like, it's not a thing. Like, they wouldn't, they wouldn't make it that they're doing it for the woman. It wouldn't be a big sacrifice. It wouldn't require multiple efforts. He sees the doors off. He puts the door on. And, of course, there's men like that. And so there are some relationships where acts of service doesn't even really apply because you just ask something and the person does it. And physical touch, love language, or whatever, never, like, you know what? is so funny the more you got to think about love languages unless of course it's literally your fucking job like me but um the more you got to think about love languages in your life the less functional your marriage is if if things are going well you don't even have to think about this shit you don't have to be like i have a physical touch love language and she got an acts of service love language no it's two people that are touching each other and doing shit for each other and that's what it is and that's it you know so if you find the, the broader lesson, as per usual, is if you find yourself in a situation where you're thinking negatively about one gender, then really zoom out, look at a macro level down at your frame, and your frame is inevitably influenced massively by the family in which you grew up, as it is for 100% of people, um, just as a dog is influenced by the environment that it is a puppy, you know? And so if you abuse a dog when it's a puppy, it's not going to be very nice dog and it's not going to be very positive about people and the exact same thing happens for children raised in dysfunctional homes now I'll give you a um uh an example and it was from my post my husband said it was useful uh, when you read the post so I'll say it here too in case people don't want to read the post that is the same basically title as this which is so if a woman and I see this a lot uh heard her parents having sex Um, But the father was always an asshole to the mother. So she hears the sounds of sex from their bedroom as a child. But then the father's like hits the mother or he demeans her or he insults her or he's always drunk or he's always nasty. And then the mother sometimes makes comments like men only want one thing. Then this is how you make a woman who grows up and thinks men only want a vagina to ejaculate into. That's all that women are to men. And they believe it wholeheartedly because of how they grew up. So this is the same exact analogy as the man who thinks women only want a servant because he saw a man that got kind of shat on and um, diminished and patronized while trying to do household work that was at the behest of the wife. This is a warped perspective from a warped dynamic that he witnessed. The same as, of course, men don't only want a vagina to ejaculate into, but of course you're going to think that if you were a little girl that saw your mother still capitulating sexually when she didn't want to to a man that treated her like garbage 
It's the exact same thing. So no, women don't want a servant, and men don't just want a vagina to ejaculate into. But if you think either one, then you have to deeply interrogate your family of origin and realize how different that really was from a healthy relationship and and ask yourself what parts of the dynamic that you grew up with are you unwittingly carrying into your current relationship. And guess what can help with that? Say it with me, therapy can. Therapy can really help with that. All right, well, I hope that this was useful and I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.